A few weeks ago, I ran a poll asking you what piece of imaging software I should cover next. Over half of you said Pixelmator, originally founded 17 years ago and still headquartered in Vilnius, Lithuania. Pixelmator is perhaps best known for its pending acquisition by a company I'm willing to bet you've heard of, Apple. There is a Pixelmator for iOS, but I'll be focusing on Pixelmator Pro 3.6, codename Archipelago, which runs exclusively on the Mac. I'm hearing from a lot of you that when taking on a new piece of software like Pixelmator, it helps to have some context. So here I am in good old Photoshop, and we'll be comparing one of the most popular features, Remove Background, to its counterpart in Pixelmator Pro. And so here I am looking at a photograph from the Dreamstime image library, link in the description, and it is set against a purple to cyan dynamic for what it's worth gradient. And so I'm pitching a kind of softball, right? I'm expecting good results when I click remove background, which delivers a layer mask. Now it's important to note that Photoshop does not modify the image itself. It doesn't change a single pixel. And so we end up getting some pretty darn good results given that all I did was click a single button, but it's not perfect. We've got some rough transitions along the forehead and some fringing up here in the hair. Compare that to Pixelmator Pro running here on the Mac. Here's the layers panel on the left hand side, by the way. And I've got the photographic image. I've got the live dynamic gradient in the background. So I actually open the PSD file. And you can do that with varying degrees of success, of course. And so now with this layer selected, I'll go up to the edit menu and choose basically that same command, remove background. But I want you to see, we're gonna see two messages fly by right here. The first says, refining edges, and then it says decontaminating colors. And notice it does not return a layer mask. Instead, it permanently deletes the pixels and it rewrites the pixels that remain. And as a result, we get much better transitions along the forehead and we have no color fringing in the hair. However, bear in mind that it's a permanent modification. If that works for you, great. If it doesn't, then go up to the edit menu and choose select subject and then convert that into a layer mask instead. And by the way, if you're enjoying what you're seeing so far, so much more to come, take a moment to subscribe and turn on notifications. All right, here we have another exceptional image from the Dreamstime library and we've got some retouching to do and that is a job for the repair tool, by the way which is in many ways analogous to the remove tool in Photoshop circa 2023. And so it does work on an independent layer, meaning that it is entirely non-destructive. It uses pattern recognition, but it is not generative. So for example, if I wanted to touch up this region right here, it's not gonna work out that well. So not knocking it, it's great for general retouching. However, I do want to align your expectations. Let's say that you wanna add a little bit of headroom to the top of this image. Why then I'll just go ahead and marquee this region like so, and then I'll switch back to the repair tool and notice I have this button, repair selection, which works out pretty well it's a resolution match at any rate however it doesn't look good and by the way if i undo it and try it again it's going to look the same because after all it is not a generative modification and just to make it clear what i'm talking about this is generative fill inside photoshop look at the top of the screen and you can see that i have multiple different variations to choose from and so while pixelmator's repair tool is a very serviceable retouching tool day-to-day -day stuff it's gonna do great it is not generative here's one that I absolutely love it's under the format menu and it's this guy denoise now I've been talking about denoise a lot over the last few weeks because it is available inside Lightroom and camera raw but it's only applicable to raw images you can't apply it to jpegs here you can you can apply it to any image you want and so this great white shark 
it was thankfully quite far away from me, but as a result, it's a very noisy image, but I choose denoise, and obviously the before is on the left, and the after is on the right, and you can see that it just takes this guy and makes him absolutely pristine, and you have full control over the amount of denoising you apply. You can even just click in this value and dial in your own, such as, you know, 67%, let's say, my only complaint is that this is a destructive modification in that you do have to commit by clicking done. All right, now let's take a look at super resolution, which allows you to increase the number of pixels inside of an image, upsample the image, so you have better detail. And it does so using machine learning. And I can't tell you the degree to which I would like to reach out and kiss the program for that. Pixelmator is like the only app out there that doesn't bandy around the term AI. It uses the more accurate term machine learning and it does a better job than Photoshop and it compares very nicely to Topaz and other technologies out there and so I've got this low res image it measures about 900 pixels wide and so I'll go up to the image menu and choose super resolution which is going to increase the number of pixels ninefold so it'll make the image three times as wide three times as tall it's manufacturing eight new pixels for every one pixel inside the image doesn't really show things off right away that nicely because you got to zoom in so i will to actual size 100 percent and notice if i drag this barrier over to the right this is what things would look like over here on the left hand side if i just zoomed in to 100 percent so we've got these gummy eyelashes really worth paying attention to is the reflection in the iris notice how jagged it is notice how smooth it becomes thanks to super resolution and i've prepared a demo file right here where i've zoomed in even further I tried the same thing in Photoshop using its best interpolation method which is preserve details 2.0 and we end up getting this effect here. It's not too bad, but the eyelashes are very gummy compared with super resolution, which is a significant improvement. All right, now let's take a look at live effects, which are analogous to live filters. For those of you who are familiar with Affinity Photo, there is a step beyond applying a filter to a smart object, which is looking like an increasingly primitive solution inside Photoshop. By way of demonstration, I have this raw photograph that I I captured with a wide angle lens so we've got some barrel distortion in other words the horizon line is bending upward now to its credit Pixelmator provides a ton of color adjustments that are all grouped together. However, it does not offer any option for automatically correcting lens distortion. Instead, you have to correct so manually, but you can do so with more control. And so I'll switch to the effects sidebar right here. Click add effect. There are my blurs. There are my sharpens. I want distortion. Believe it or not, the one I'm looking for is bump right here and that makes the effect even worse however that's because my scale value is set to positive i'm going to go ahead and change it to negative and we get some pin cushioning as we're seeing right here and so here is the before effect and here is after and so you can turn that on and off you can change the nature of the effect you even have this function right here which is known as the effect rope now nowhere in the documentation is there an explanation for this wacky rope animation right here however i love this widget because it gives you control over the center of the effect and that way you get the exact correction you're looking for. Hey, real quick, unlike Lightroom or Camera Raw, Pixelmator's copious color adjustments do not let you remove chromatic aberration. So for example, this image looks great wide, but if I zoom in, we have color fringing galore. The solution, join my Patreon, where I'll show you how to make use of a selective focus adjustment that's way better than Photoshop's feel blur. For more, go to patreon.com slash deeknow. And now back to what may one day be Apple's answer to Photoshop, Pixelmator Pro. All right, that's great, but not everything is handled as neatly. For example, Liquify, one of the most popular functions inside Photoshop. 
absolutely dynamic as well. Same inside Affinity Photo here. It's not only static, it's pretty darn rinky-dink. And so notice we have this small collection of tools. It's great that you don't have to go into a separate workspace. However, they don't really work all that well. And so notice if I choose Warp, I can't even work on this raw image layer right here. I have to convert it to pixels, so I'll jump it by pressing Command-J and then convert to pixels like so. That way I don't harm the original. And now I can drag the pixels around directly inside the image window. That's great. Let's say what I want to do is make Benjamin's eyes bigger. I'll switch to bump, which is the same as bloat. And I'll click a few times like so. It's encouraging to see this option down here that allows you to click and hold in order to turn off the preview and then see the after view by releasing. That implies that we have a dynamic effect, but notice these two buttons right here. They dim the second you so much as switch to a different liquify tool. Notice that? All right, maybe you can live with that one. This next one I find, I'm just going to say, appalling, and I am going to share it with you. Then I'll end on a high note, I promise. But I want you to know about this one. And I'm posing the question here, should you ship a feature along with a piece of software if the feature as implemented is no good? My answer is no. Welcome to the world of drop shadows inside Pixelmator Pro. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this editable type layer and I'll apply a drop shadow by switching to my style options right here. And notice I've got inner shadow. That's an interior effect, which means I can change the color as well as the opacity and the blend mode. And I have access to the exact same blend modes that we see inside Photoshop, by the way. Whereas with a drop shadow, which is much more likely, right? Because it's an exterior effect, we don't have blend mode control. That's insane. And so as a result, you can't create a reliable colored shadow. You have to go with black. Otherwise, you're not going to get any blending interaction. It's not, it doesn't even have the decency to automatically apply the multiply blend mode. And reducing the opacity value, as you well know, is nowhere near the same thing. Don't even get me started there. And so what you have to do, right, is not use the automated drop shadow and create a duplicate of the layer instead, like in the good old days, and then give it a color and assign multiply. The saving grace here is that I have access to live effects, including Gaussian blur, and so I can change the blurriness any time I like. All right, I said I'd end on, uh, on a high note, and I will. So one of the things that's really interesting about this software is even though it's 17 years old, it feels like it's been designed by Apple the whole time. It feels very much like pages and numbers and those applications, by the way, in that it takes full advantage of the Mac OS. So all that stuff that you Mac OS freaks love, like terminal operations and automation and all that stuff, this thing supports. And I'll show you a couple of things that I like. Notice we have a duplicate command. Instead of save as, you have duplicate. I hate that, by the way. I hate creating a separate document and saving it or having to click delete that's so dumb but did you know that you can just press the option key to get the old save as command which you know apple invented in the first place so that's great and then you can revert this is awesome to the last saved version of the image the last open version of the image or all versions meaning a bunch of different versions that have been auto saved to iCloud and so uh, this, I can tell you in the last 30 days of using this product, how many times this has saved my neck. It is like having a time machine for each and every image that you open. And it's much more elegant than any cloud solution I've seen from Adobe. So what do you think? Me, I'm so impressed I went ahead and bought the program. How about you? Will it last? Will Apple bury it inside photos? Does it spell the end of Photoshop's domination on the Mac? Comment down below and then subscribe and turn on notifications so you know what's coming next. And for a look at a few practical things that you can do in Pixelmator Pro, one of which isn't even possible in Photoshop, join me at patreon.com slash deke now and then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.